Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Like subscribe, and share with your fellow denarian friends to help support our channel. If you have not done so yet, pick up your free trial copy of the Currency Exchange Planner and check out the awesome new Currency Exchange Planner Companion, voted the number one exchange planner in the dinar community. Be sure and get with the times using the new blockchain-based Brave browser. Why not get paid while you surf the net? Every penny counts these days, especially with so many out of work. As we move forward through these stressful times we are living in, reassure your family and friends that this will pass, and things are going to get better as the new system is born. If you're new to blockchain and digital currencies, go check out my playlist on my channel. I have listed plenty of educational videos on both subjects to more than bring you up to speed on the emerging technologies, what they are and why we need them to move forward. Every 90 years or so monetary policies change worldwide, we are in the process of the next change to the Internet of Value, where assets and identities will all be digital. With that said, let's get started with today's articles. First article of interest for today, Deputy. The cabinet will be ready in the next two weeks. The representative of the Al-Hikmat movement, Azad al-Morshidi, revealed on Saturday that the cabinet will be ready to vote during the next two weeks. Al-Morshidi said, about 50% of representatives of Shiite blocs have no objection to the prime minister designate. Al-Morshidi expected that the ministerial formation will be ready to vote in the House of Representatives within the next two weeks explaining that the person in charge is in the process of discussions with political forces, the Iraqi street, and civil society organizations to form a cabinet that has a national consensus. Next article of interest. In the video, the company, Keycard, begins distributing salaries from homes. With the entry into the third week of implementing the curfew in the capital, the K-Card company worked to form field teams to hand over employees and retirees their salaries at home as a step to urge the application of the ban. Citizens praised this initiative for creating solutions for some of them due to the difficulty of movement for people with disabilities or patients, and stressed the necessity of adhering to the curfew and not leaving homes. Echoes of popularity in government circles called on citizens to implement the curfew and not take to the streets to control the epidemic and not spread it among the general public, as the setting up to date is in control despite the increasing number of casualties throughout the country. I placed a link to this video on my blog under the this article if you are interested in watching it. Next article of interest. On the threshold of the crisis. Conflicting statements in the Prime Minister's office regarding the issue of financing employee salaries by printing currency. The issue of printing the Iraqi currency to finance the state budget, which the follow-up cell in the Prime Minister's office stated, has caused a great deal of social and economic circles, as Article 26 of the Iraqi Central Bank law prohibits printing the Iraqi currency. While the economic advisor to the Prime Minister sees the appearance of Mohammed Saleh, the topic is just a suggestion. Printed currency. The follow-up cell revealed, in the Prime Minister's office, that the government will be able to distribute the salaries of the current month of March, while it will resort to some solutions to ensure the provision of salaries next month. She explained that the salaries of employees amount to three billion and a half per month, which may push Iraq to print the currency as a last option, as the state of the state will be affected starting from next month. Cell leader Mustafa Jabbar Sanad said in a press statement, the coronavirus crisis caused the disruption of the economy in general and the oil sector in particular, as global demand for oil decreased by 10 million barrels per day, while it will decrease during the next month by 9 million barrels. The drop in the world oil price by $1 means the loss of Iraq's annual budget of $1 billion. He pointed out that, among the solutions that the country's government may be heading towards is the printing of the currency, noting that, this is not possible without the presence of a cover of gold and hard currency. However, this option is offered as a last option, as things can go for a month or two. Sanad cited his talk about currency printing that, the United States decided today, 
through a decision by the Congress, to print the currency at a value of $2 trillion, which is the first country in the world, but it did not adhere to the issue of currency printing. So how do other countries that depend on the U.S. dollar, referring to Iraq? Abdul Mahdi's advisor explains, the financial advisor to the prime minister, the appearance of Mohammed Saleh, revealed today, Saturday, Iraq's options to face the new financial situation, which was imposed on the country after the decline in oil prices and the emergence of the coronavirus while stressing that the issue of printing an Iraqi currency to avoid the crisis is just an opinion and a proposal. Saleh said, in a statement, that a team is working with the Ministerial Council to restructure state expenditures, noting that our options to confront the financial situation are heading towards pressure expenditures. He believed that the issue of printing currency is merely a personal and suggested opinion that is not consistent with the central bank law. Economist explains, today, Saturday, the economic expert, Nabi al-Marsumi, said that the Central Bank of Iraq law of 2004 and its amendments prohibit government lending, but it allows him to purchase government securities from the secondary market only and that this is done through the use of a method of deduction of treasury transfers by the central bank has a debt to the bank the owner of the initial deduction, and this leads to an increase in his assets the rights of the central bank over others, which requires an increase in his liabilities, the rights of others over the central bank, through an increase in the currency in circulation. And the decree said in an interview to the platform, Yes Iraq, that, this is the same method that was used by the central bank of Iraq after the collapse of oil prices in 2014 knowing that the internal debts amount to about 40 trillion dinars representing treasury transfers and bonds discounted with government banks and the Central Bank of Iraq. He added, Iraq will resort to adopting this method now due to the large deficit in the 2020 budget and to cover the salary gap that may reach $15 billion. The Central Bank of Iraq law does not allow the printing of the currency to finance the deficit in the public budget because this measure would expose the national currency exchange rate to collapse as well as its inflationary effects on the Iraqi economy. Next article of interest. Benefiting from the crisis. Is the digital dollar kicking off in the corona era? The American administration intends to send checks to citizens within weeks as part of a stimulus package to address the economic consequences of the spread of corona. But lawmakers have not said anything about what millions of people without bank accounts will do with these checks once they receive them. Writer Morgan Risks answers in an analytical view through Bloomberg Opinion that people without American bank accounts will visit the checkout outlets and similar financial companies as converting the checks into cash will cost up to 3.5% of the face value money that they can use it to meet the urgent need. This is not just a problem for these families. From the government's point of view, sending material checks to individuals is costly and ineffective, and in crises time is the key. And when physical spacing is crucial, reducing the need for material delivery, such as checks and dollar notes, will be good for everyone. The solution. We need a digital dollar, a currency that all Americans can use to engage in the economy of the 21st century, and this crisis provides an ideal opportunity to create it. But how is it done? Congress can give all U.S. citizens the option to receive stimulus funds by opening digital accounts or wallets directly with the Federal Reserve, a proposal that Democrats have adopted in the Corona Response Bill. And the basic infrastructure is already there because the central bank already provides accounts for different banks and government agencies, these accounts pay attractive interest, with an average of 1.5% over the past two years compared to less than 0.1% for regular current accounts, and the payments through them were very clear and secure. The Federal Reserve cannot default on repayment, so deposit insurance is not necessary for both small and large balances. In order to quickly register retail customers, and companies. In new federal accounts, Congress must use private sector banks that already have the necessary internet and customer service systems, in addition to their own accounts at the central bank, 
and the federal bank can compensate banks for their work as an intermediary until it is available to him time to develop his own website and support its employees. Benefits of strengthening the digital dollar Federal accounts will enjoy a wide range of long-term benefits, the most obvious of which is that they will boost financial inclusion because nearly 7% of U.S. households lack a bank account and another 19% have a bank account but still depend somewhat on service providers' expensive non-bankers such as checkout outlets for payments and other financial needs. Federal accounts will also place these families in the mainstream financial stream, with no fees or minimum balances, and the U.S. money and payments system will become a public infrastructure similar to roads, sidewalks, public libraries, and the justice system. In addition, the Fed's bank accounts will reduce the possibility of future financial crises represented in the collective withdrawal of funds from investors by the system, and the central bank accounts will replace some unstable deposit alternatives such as money market funds and repurchase agreements, where large depositors currently tend to store their money. And with that money stored safely in the Federal Reserve and always available, these depositors will have no reason to panic and escape removing a major source of system vulnerability. Central bank accounts will also make the U.S. payment system faster and more efficient, because all payments between accounts will be visible in real time, it will strengthen the Fed's ability to manage the economy, and interest rate adjustments will be transferred directly to a wide audience rather than just the banks. The American bank can conduct a money helicopter an expansionary fiscal policy that is funded by increasing the money supply and that involves printing large amounts of money and distributing them to the public in order to stimulate the economy, directly in these bank accounts for emergency stimulus. Consumers and retailers will also benefit because unlike other banks the Federal Reserve will not charge fees to merchants who accept their debit cards. The digital dollar will also maintain the dollar's position as the dominant global currency, a huge economic advantage for the United States, as China has a digital currency in the pipeline, and Facebook's Libra, so the dollar will likely lose its global standing if it does not compete. What about the cost? Beyond squeezing financial resources, the Fed's bank accounts will generate government revenue and the central bank will expand its portfolio of government bonds and loans to banks, whose interest will almost certainly exceed the operating costs of the Fed's accounts. Surplus profits will be returns to the federal government. Certainly, banks may not welcome competition from the Federal Reserve, and the popularity of central bank accounts will reduce their deposits, which are the main source of funds. But the central bank can compensate for this by lending to banks and providing them with ample resources to continue lending to individuals and companies. It's time to bypass the United States paper currency system and scrutiny, as the digital dollar can help improve the government's emergency response to the current and future crises. The digital dollar will also meet the increasing demand for sovereign digital money. Next article of interest. Digital Dollar Foundation adds 24 members to create CBDC framework. A digital U.S. dollar came so close to being a reality this week, having been proposed as part of the country's bailout bill for COVID-19. To keep that momentum going, the Digital Dollar Foundation, DDF, has named several former government officials as new members. The DDF, led by former CFDC officials Christopher Giancarlo and Daniel Gore Fine, Name 24 new members on March 26, Coindesk reports. This group will be expected to develop a framework for a new central bank digital currency, CBDC. The group includes Sigel Mandelkar, former Under Secretary for the Treasury for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, Tim Morrison, a former advisor to President Trump, Sheila Warren, leader of the World Economic Forums, WEF blockchain efforts, Don Wilson, founder and CEO of diversified trading firm DRW, and Sharon Bowen, former commissioner of the Commodity and Futures Trading Commission, CFDC. Giancarlo took the opportunity to praise the group and express his hope that they'll advance the cause of a digital dollar.
The insights and expertise of the new advisory group members will be invaluable as we work together to help make the dollar a more effective and smarter currency in an increasingly digital global economy, Zhang Carlo said. The DDF was formed in partnership with Accenture and has the broad goal of advocating for a CBDC. The need for a digital currency might have been hard to understand for the public a couple of weeks ago, but millions of Americans are quickly going to find out how it would have made their current situation much better. In several versions of the House Democrats' bailout bill, a CBDC was proposed as a faster method of getting bailout funds in taxpayer hands. Without it, there are concerns that the people who need government assistance most may need to wait between three weeks to several months to receive a check. Many unbanked people will then likely lose 3.5% cashing the check. A CBDC solves that problem by allowing the government to transfer funds directly to an easily obtained digital wallet. Unfortunately, the digital dollar was dropped from the House bill and will most likely not make it to whatever version reaches Trump's desk. If you liked today's video hit the like and subscribe buttons to be notified as new ones are posted. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter for the rest of today's articles of interest. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded Currency Exchange Planner and check out the new Currency Exchange Planner companion before you leave. Use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails and they boot up the new quantum financial system on the blockchain. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be too late. The program is made so everyone can afford to save in gold by offering it one gram at a time. Start saving in a real true asset like gold, it's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video, go check them out, knowledge is power, using that newfound knowledge is powerful. Over and out, for now, the Denarian.